Okay, we're back. We've collected our data, averaged it three times. We have a nice, reliable sample. We now have to show you that we need to consider other factors as we do our final calculation of the dissolved oxygen. So what this chart shows you, this is right out of your stat manual, by the way, this is going to show you the effect of the atmospheric pressure on the DO because the, depending on the sea level you're at and the amount of pressure in the air, that can affect how much oxygen is dissolved into the water. So if we look at this chart, you can see that we have a correction factor of 0.98. The atmospheric pressure the day we took this test is 745 milligrams of mercury. And as we follow that over, you can see that it almost uh, needs no correction. But we still need to multiply our milligrams of oxygen by the figure 0.98. Now, we came up with 9 milligrams per liter of oxygen in our water. And if we take that and multiply by 0.98, we're going to come up with a figure of 8.82. So we now have our adjusted figure of 8.82 milligrams per liter. And we're gonna, now going to take that and calculate our percent saturation. Just a warning, when you, when you work with these charts in the manual, you have to be very precise because the precision of the chart is somewhat limited. I'm going to try and find 8.82 on this scale. So you can see if I make a very small error, it's going to have large consequences. So please make sure you're as precise as you can be. What you want to do is line up two points. Your oxygen dissolved as well as the water temperature. Now we checked the temperature already and found that to be 24 degrees Celsius. I'm going to take and put one end of my ruler right at 24. The bottom end should go at 8.82. Now I can't find a number that precise on here, but I can do and get as close as I possibly can. Right there, the top moves a little, so make sure you shift it back. And the place on the, on the middle line where these cross is my percent saturation. So if I made a little mark here, I'm going to find that to be about 103% saturation. Again, check your scale, 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm going to say my percent saturation is 103%. Okay, our last step was to find that the percent of saturation of oxygen was 103%. So we are now going to take that number and go to the STAP manual chapter that discusses calculating our results. So that's where we are here. Just like before, please be as precise as you can, since if you look at the number scale here, you know, I'm, I'm between 100 and 120, but there's a lot of room for, for making some errors. So be as careful as you can. Take a ruler or a straight edge. That's going to be about 110. That's 105. 103 is a little hair to the left. If I mark it right there and then read to the other axis, I have a Q value that's sky high. I'm going to call that 98%. And again, there's, there's room for error there, so be as careful as you can. But I would say that intersected at 98%, which is an excellent Q value for dissolved oxygen. Okay, now that you know how to do the dissolved oxygen portion of the test, you might be asking, well, how do I do the biochemical oxygen demand? Well, if you know how to do the dissolved oxygen test, the procedure is exactly the same for the biochemical oxygen demand. Um, the only situation that's going to be different is that you're going to wait five days before you run these tests again. The reason why you're going to wait five days is because we want to see what the biochemical oxygen demand is on the water. Where does the biochemical oxygen demand come from? That's a great question. The demand for oxygen comes from the organisms in the water. Now, you're going to collect a sample on the day of so a field trip that not only allows you to do the test for your dissolved oxygen test that you already did down at the river, but you're going to bring back a sample, and you're going to have it labeled. For example, this is labeled 89A BOD sample. You're going to bring back a sample, and you're going to put this, and you're going to fill it up just the same way you filled up the other bottles. You're going to make sure that you have no oxygen bubbles in there, and you're going to let it sit 
for a period of five days. Why five days? Well, during that time period, we want to see if there's been a lot of nutrients in the water, which would cause the microorganisms that live in the water to use up even more oxygen, or just a few nutrients in the water. See, microorganisms will use up however much oxygen they need in order to consume the excess nutrients that are in the water. That's, therefore, where biochemical oxygen demand comes from, the demand for oxygen by the microorganisms in the water. That's what it's all about. Where do those nutrients come from? Well, healthy rivers have small amounts of nutrients in the water, okay? Um, but unhealthy rivers will have nutrients from, say, fertilizer runoff. So if the river runs through a golf course or through some agricultural land that doesn't have a good buffer zone to absorb those nutrients or doesn't have a wetland to absorb those nutrients, um, those nutrients are going to go directly into the river and it's going to increase the amount of microorganisms in the river. You might get even an algae bloom that could show up in making the river green or yellow or some kind of off muddy colored uh, solution to it. So that is where the nutrients come from. They could also come from leaky septic tanks around a lake, for example, or maybe a sewage treatment plant that's not operating properly. Um, any kind of major storm that would run off of areas that are maybe an agricultural feedlot, that would provide the river with excess nutrients. And it would cause an abundance or an explosion of microorganisms in the river, and they would in turn consume the oxygen. So what you do on the day of the field trip is you collect this, after you collect this in uh, water, you let it sit for five days. During those five days, the microorganisms will consume the oxygen. The more nutrients, the more oxygen they'll consume. So, five days come and you run the same identical procedure test that you did for dissolved oxygen with this water. You'll probably have enough in here to do three um, tests. So you'll do those three tests. Well, what if the five days later is not the same A day? Or what if it falls on a weekend? Um, it'll be your responsibility to either come in after school, if it's a school day, and run the test. Maybe one of the three or four people that are in the group can do that. Or it'll be your responsibility to volunteer and one of you take it home and run the test at home. And if that's the case, um, because it's a weekend and somebody has to do the test at home, maybe your teacher will be so kind as to throw you a few extra credit points for that uh, diligent work that you do outside of class. So that's the biochemical oxygen demand test. Now, let's stop and think. On the day you went down to the river, you ran your dissolved oxygen test, and you, for example, recorded that you got 5 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen. What do you think is going to happen five days later? Think you'll still have 5 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen? Probably not. At least I hope you said no, because you're going to have some sort of oxygen demand on the water. So let's say five days later you come back and you run the test, and voila, you only have three milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen. Where did the oxygen go? That's right, the microorganisms consume the oxygen in their normal metabolic processes. As they consume the nutrients, they consume the oxygen. So just as if you were put in a room that was completely sealed off, you would consume all the oxygen in the room over a given amount of time, the microorganisms would do the same thing and you want to see how much oxygen they consumed, and that would be an indicator of overall water quality based on microorganisms and the nutrients present in the water. Too many nutrients, not too good. Too many microorganisms, not too good as well. So let's go back. Five days later, you find out that there are three milligrams of, uh, per liter of dissolved oxygen, whereas on the first day when you did the test, you had five milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen. What does that tell you? Simple math shows you that Two milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen got consumed. You started with five, you ended with three, two. It just depends. Every test is going to be different. Every day is different. So you might even have more dissolved oxygen um, consumed or less. It just depends upon the overall quality of the water. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to calculate your quality value based on that data that I just gave you, five milligrams per liter versus uh, coming back and resulting 3 milligrams per liter, 2 milligrams being used up. So when I come back, we'll show you how to calculate the Q value for, dis for biochemical oxygen demand. Calculating your Q value is 
basically the same thing as when you calculated your Q value for dissolved oxygen, only now we have different data on both our axes. Okay? Down here we have the amount of biochemical oxygen demand. As you recall, I said that on the day that the test took place, we had 5 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen, and yet on the day, five days later, we did our test for BOD, we had 3 milligrams per liter. So down here, the first thing we have to do is we have to subtract to see how much biochemical oxygen demand there was. In this case, 5 minus 3 gives us 2. So what I did was I extrapolated where 2 would be on this graph, and kind of figured out where it was, and I marked it right here. So this is our 2 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen. Okay? I then put my straight edge right there by the 2, drew a line up until it intersected the Q value line that's already pre-drawn on the graph. Once I did that, I can see here that this value intersects the pre-drawn Q value at somewhere around the vicinity of 80 283. Right there is where the intersection occurs. So I can say that my Q value, biochemical oxygen in, is 82. That's pretty good. You know, if it was all 5 milligrams got used up, we could get a pretty low score here. Okay? So what, since we only had 2 milligrams of dissolved oxygen consumed by the microorganisms, we had a very good Q value score of about 83, 82 in that vicinity. And that's how you calculate the Q value for your biochemical oxygen demand. So good luck with both of your tests and enjoy doing them. And do them to the best of your ability so we have great data to share with the various groups that we share our data with.